Just by me and my night, hey, Jesus. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those who be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I love thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. We join in singing hymn number 97 in your hymnal. We praise thee, O God. Number 97. We, we praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, find the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, find the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the spirit of light who has shown us the Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who had borne all our sins that has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again, revive us again, fill each heart with thy love, may our souls be rekindled with fire from above, hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is meek and right to do so. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. And let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for the glory of another day. We thank you for the use of our hands and our hearts and our voice and our prayers. Lord, let us be good and faithful servants to use this day so that the world may be made better. We thank you, Lord, for a change in leadership. We pray for those, Lord, who have made a commitment to help. 
and to serve, and to recover, and to reclaim, and to rebuild. We pray for those, Lord, who seek to help the least among us. We pray, Lord, that you give them strength for these bold and audacious, audacious plans that would cripple normal people. But Lord, we're just normal people, but with your strength, you give us the power to do amazing things. Lord, send your amazing grace so that we may recover from disease and unemployment and lack of hope and lack of education and lack of access. Lord, we know that you have cattle on a thousand hill. We just want one or two steers, Lord, so we can divide it up and share it with those who are hungry and those who need. Lord, we thank you that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And that you give us a new day so that we can lift our heads up, that we can look up and find you. Lord, we thank you for another Sunday morning. Have mercy on those who are not with us today, who couldn't make it, who wanted to be here. And for some reason, Lord, they were busy. Or they were kept out. Or they were confused. But whatever the reason, Lord, we ask in your son's name that when their business is done, they come back to us, that they fellowship with us, that they pray and sing and rejoice with us. Lord, if you do that, we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, and we'll do it in your son's holy name. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us. Fountain filled with blood. 255. 255 in your hymnal. There is a fountain filled with blood. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and a sinner's blood beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty We will survive. Redeemed 
redeeming love has changed my thing and shall be till I die and shall be till I die and shall be till I die redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die and in a nobler I'll sing thy power to say when this listening stammering tongue lies silent in the grave, lies silent in the grave, lies silent in the grave when this listening stammering tongue. Lie silent in the grave. Amen. Scripture this morning comes from the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city going a day's journey, and he cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed in God. They proclaimed a fast and put on a sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word of God for the people of God. From all that dwell below the sky. From all that dwell below the sky, let the high creator praise arise. Let the redeemer praise things from through every land by every speak all these words saying I am the Lord thy God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me Lord have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law my soul be on thy God ten thousand fold arise and hold thou To draw thee from the sky. Here with Christ our Savior said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, how about page 54? Page 54 in your hymn, a mighty fortress is thy God, a bulwark never failing. Who sang all four first? A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our help is amid the flood. What mortal if prevailing? For still 
our age unfold the seek to work the throne. His craft and power are and on with cool On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide? I'll strive and plenty losing. We're not the right man on our side. The man of God don't choose Does that look that might be? Because Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabbath, his name, name from age to age, the same, and he must, must win the battle. Announcements for the morning. You may be seated. We've had a, an exciting uh, Bible study. Uh, it's it's exciting because it's uh, it can't be stopped. Even though we can't meet here in the church, we we stream it stream it live, and and our technician has allowed us <laughs> to do this all the way to Africa and to Canada and whoever wants to tune in. Uh, at four o'clock on Wednesday, we will continue our Bible study on stewardship. And the exciting thing is to realize is that we're all stewards. And we're all responsible. And if we're smart, we will look at our stewardship and not worry about anybody else's. Uh, you may join us um, on Wednesday at 4 o'clock in the Bowen Chapel Zoom room. If you need that information, give us a call. Uh, we'll gladly get that to you. Um, how many people here are on that? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, that will be this Friday from 4 to 5, and we'll continue until we have completed uh, the book on stewardship. Wednesday. Friday or Wednesday? Wednesday, Wednesday, I'm sorry. Wednesday, 4 to 5. I may need this more than you, but for anybody who needs a calendar for 2021, I have a plethora of calendars that have been given to me. I got one with dogs on it. I got one uh, with... Uh, Kids not being hungry. I got one for Mount Vernon and George Washington. Uh, I got birds and tigers and everything. If you need a calendar, I have plenty of calendars uh, for you so you can keep up with a day better than me. If you know anybody who needs one, I will gladly give it to you. On the 30th, which is next Saturday, we will have our second streaming movie called Just Mercy. Phenomenal true story. Uh, of a man who fought for uh, people who were innocent. And uh, you will enjoy it. It's 5 o'clock next Saturday, the 30th, and no charge. Uh, again, we will have this uh, streamed to you, and you can look at this on your computer. Some of you can look at it on your phones. But uh, this will be streamed next Saturday, and it will start at 5 o'clock. Again, if you need information, uh, get in touch with us. We'll make sure that the link is given to you. And we're going to practice it so that it goes smooth this week. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Any other announcements from anyone else? Anything at all? Okay. Can you celebrate that? Yeah. Go for it. We're going to do another 97. 97. Number 97. <laughs> Okay. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Spirit of life. Who has shown us a Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Oh, glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain. Who had borne all our sins and has cleansed every strain. 
Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May our souls be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Oh, amen. From the book of St. Mark, uh, chapter 1, starting at verse 14. From the book of St. Mark, chapter 1, starting at verse 14. Now, after Jesus was arrested, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, the kingdom is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And passing along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew and the brother of Simon casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boats, mending their nets. And immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and they followed him. The Lord of God, for the people of God. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days, and I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can barely see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? For me, he shows me things these weary eyes can't see. And so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. And I won't complain. God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. Been better than this whole world could ever be. He's been good to me. He dried all my tears away. He gave me a brand new sunny day. And so I'll say, thank you, Lord. And I won't complain. God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. Better than this whole world could ever be. He's been good to me. He dried all of my tears away. He gave me the beauty of one more day. And so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. And I won't complain. Climbing hills. Hills to climb and hearts to change. Hills to climb and hearts to change. The title for this morning's sermon comes from a lifetime of striving and reaching for something a little bit higher. As a child, I was told you must move up 
and not stay passive or stay still. You can't go backwards. You must go forward. And in all ways seeking to go beyond today's achievements and yesterday's achievements, it was a struggle many times to just keep going higher and higher, to, to reach up, to walk up, to live up to my parents' expectations, to be better today than I was yesterday. And tomorrow, the climb kept going. You guys remember the nursery rhyme when you were younger. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. They were striding. They were going up. They weren't going down. Jack fell down, and he broke his crown. And Jill came tumbling after. No matter how high or strong you climb, it's just a human journey that often ends in tragedy, but you got to keep climbing anyways. In the scripture read to you this morning, uh, the prophet Jonah had a hill to climb. His job was to be a prophet. That's what his job was. God charged him to go to that great city of Nineveh and to tell the people to get right with God. Nineveh was prosperous. It stretched over many, many miles. And Jonah was afraid to go tell those important folks that they had done wrong. Amen? Sometimes we don't speak truth to power. You're just wrong. You're just wrong. What you're doing is not right, and I'm going to call you out. Sometimes we can't do that. Well, that was the situation Jonah. Jonah said, I'm getting out of here. And he ran, and he hid, and got swallowed up in a whale. Amen? Amen. Sometimes when you don't do what God tells you to do, you can get your head bumped. You'll get swallowed up in other things that you can't even deal with because you didn't do your job. You didn't climb that hill. It, oh, that hill's too high. Well, with God, all things are possible. Climb the hill with God. When Jonah ran away, he ran away by himself. He didn't have any help. He didn't have any support. He didn't have any friends to look out for him. He ran away from God. You can't run away from God. All you can do is to get in trouble. So Jonah's in this fish, and he says, you know, when I was outside this fish, the Lord took care of me. <laughs> I'm going to pray to the Lord. And so that's what he did. He, he got afraid, he got afraid, and he, and he got scared. He said, I'm going to pray to the Lord. Jonah had a hill to climb. He had to struggle with his safety instead of fulfilling God's work. Sometimes we worry about our safety, and we're not worried about what God told us to do. Sometimes we worry about our job and our income. And our... Anybody know what I'm talking about? God has given us something to do, and sometimes we put other things in the way. When God gives us a job to fulfill that task, we need to fulfill it. If we don't, sometimes we'll get stuck or swallowed and lead to other problems that are much, much worse than we could ever imagine. Sometimes God just wants us to have a little faith to climb just a little bit higher, pray just a little bit longer to be a little bit more patient. Now, the good thing about the story is that uh, God gave Jonah, another chance. Amen? Anybody ever had a second chance in life? Woo, it's nice to have a second chance after you messed up. Amen. Jonah got a second chance. And he went to the city and he told them, you got 40 days and the Lord's going to wipe this book. You know the people of Nineveh listened to Jonah? They listened to him. Now, if Jonah had just done this in the beginning, he didn't have to get swallowed and lost and cried to the Lord. But when he finally did his job, the people of Nineveh, they listened to him. They repented. And God had mercy on them. Same thing happened with the disciples. They were out fishing. And Jesus said, stop what you're doing. Come with me. I'm going to show you a better way. Drop what you're doing right now. Come with me. They followed him. Now, they didn't know what they were going to go through. They had no idea of what Jesus was going to teach them, but they listened and they were obedient. They had a hill to climb. And it ended on Calvary's mountain. They had to watch. In fact, they didn't watch. They <laughs> ran away like Jonah when Jesus was put on the cross. All of us have a hill to climb. All of us have to go and do what we're supposed to do. So God sends us poets and priests 
and prophets so that we can climb our hills and be strengthened in our climb. He provides words and insight that we don't become too weary and despondent. Listen to the first book of Psalms. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, he meditates day and night. He's like a tree that's planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season and does not, its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, it will prosper. The wicked men are not so, but like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of righteous. For the Lord knows the way of life and the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Book of Psalms. Don't be hanging out with gangsters and thieves and punks and murderers and bullies. Amen? Amen. Don't hang out with those folks. You know the difference. Be with God's people. Be with those people who want righteousness and want judgment, who want civility, and they want law. God sends us these words for us to read and to study. It is the language and the literature of wisdom that our light that lights our way. And even though we have to go upward and climb, it shows us the way. The words of the Holy Scripture are not only visionary, they're uplifting. If they can do it, you can do it. If Jonah can do it, if Moses can do it, if the, you can do it. The words of the Holy Scripture are there to help us search, even though we have to climb. Even though sometimes we got to stop on our way up the hill, on a rock, and just take a rest. Amen? Amen. The Lord is the author and the finisher of our faith. It is the poet and the priest and the prophet who gave us useful words of wisdom and help to help us with our daily climb. And God heard our prayers last week. And a new day began for those who were sick, for those who were unemployed, for those who were attacked and despondent. In the midst of an orderly change of government, God sent a young woman to lift our spirits. She was the youngest court laureate to address a presidential inauguration. She had her own hill to climb, even though she is a very proficient and beautiful poet. When she was younger, she had trouble with her words and could not pronounce things. She had to struggle and to practice and to pray to get better. But once she did that, once she kept climbing up, God lifted to her place so that the world could hear her speak. And so Amanda Gorman electrified the nation and the world with her poem that showed us that we still have hills to climb in achieving justice, in achieving equality, in achieving human dignity and righteousness. Hear God's wisdom and truth through a young poet on our way to being a spiritual priestess. Hear her words. The hill we climb. When the day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade, we bravely Brave the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. And yet, the dawn of ours before we knew it, somehow we do it. Somehow we weather and witness a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream and become president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine. 
But that does not mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to form our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, all colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze, not to where what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so that we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek to harm no one, and we seek for harmony in all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say that this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped, that even as we tried, as we tired, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own fig and vine tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we live up to our own tongue, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in the bridges we made. That is the promise to the glade, the hill we climb if we only dare. It's because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how to repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it, would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith, we must trust. For while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We fear at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour. But within it, we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we ask, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could a catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our action and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation because the future, to become the future, our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain, if we merge with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left. Every breath from the bronze pounded chest, we will raise this wounded world to a wonderstone. We will rise from the golden hills of the west. We will rise from the windswept northeast, where our forefathers first realized the revolution. We will rise from the lake rim cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun-baked south we will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. In every known nook of our nation, and every corner called our country, our people, diverse and beautiful, will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of the flame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light if we are brave enough to see it, if we're brave enough to be it. God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. Better than this whole world could ever be. He's been good to me. 
You dried all of my tears away. You gave me a brand new sunny day. And so I'll say thank you, Lord. I'll say thank you, Lord. I'll say thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Lord, we thank you for the poet and the priest and the prophet, those who practice your grace. Lord, let us be the light that Jesus brought into the world. Let us shine, not for ourselves, Lord, but for someone to see the way to you. If you do that, Lord, when we leave you, it will be much better than when we came in. And this is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You have been at the service of Old Chapel Amy Church, 423 Delaware. We were glad to have your presence. We seek you to come back and join us again. If you would like to send a donation or your tithes or offering to the church, you can send it to the address of the church. Uh, you can call the pastor, he'll come get it, or you can send it at PayPal. We await your gift. God bless you until next week. Amen.